welcome to another episode of A Breath of Fresh Marketing. I'm your host, Melissa Ciudakis. And on today's show, we have Brandon Tobias. He's a modern esoteric practitioner who helps people discover their soul's purpose to experience more health, wealth, love in their lives. Brandon, good to have you here. Thank you for having me, Melissa. It's great to meet you. And uh, it's kind of cool because we've never met before. And this is just going to be mostly off the top. I think I looked at the script for like two seconds. So I don't really know what's going to be asked, but I'm excited. It's going to be good. All right, good. Nice. Well, awesome to have you here. You you have an interesting background. And uh, can you share a little bit and tell us about yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, so... And thank you for the intro, by the way. Um, I'm not used to being introduced as a modern esoteric guide of sorts that helps people find their sole purpose. That is so foreign to me. It's so crazy. It's so weird because uh, I'm not that guy. Uh, and I don't know how I became that guy, but I don't know. Some part of me is is meant to be, you know, progress into that, I'm sure. But, you know, I'm uh, a former college football player. I grew, I grew up in Southern California, very traditional family, was raised Catholic. And uh, right here in the, like by the beach. And, uh, you know, for the longest time and still to this day, I'm very skeptical about everything esoteric, everything spiritual, everything, right? And it's funny because the, the only thing that I, the real thing that got me interested in astrology, there's two things. One was desperation, okay, because I didn't know what the hell I was here to do on earth. And the second was because it, my brain is so logical that I needed to concretely see something like a roadmap that could give me proof of sorts. Um, and even half the time when I was reading, I was like, I'm still delusional, but um, that would, that would kind of confirm these things. So anyways, that's me in a nutshell. I studied political science in college and philosophy. I was a football player. Uh, I've been through many, many different health crises in my life. And, and most of my life has been helping people perform better on a cellular level, on a physiological level, and lowering inflammation, increasing performance, all these types of things. So yeah, somehow re recently, uh, I've, I've, I've turned into, I guess, more of a, an esoteric person. So that's really cool. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I, I love astrology, so I'm very excited today because we're going to be talking quite a bit about that. Yeah. And I have my own little story about how I discovered astrology and how I got into it, but it's something that I really love. So was your family involved in astrology and tarot cards and all that stuff, or was that something that you just kind of picked up on on your own? Totally. Yeah. No, my family couldn't have been farther candidates <laughs> for being interested in astrology. And I love them to death, by the way. I love them to death. You know, I hope hopefully they love me to death. But um, when I first got into astrology um, and I sh like the first the first <laughs> the first time I showed them astrology was I didn't really have money for Christmas and I was kind of broke because I was living just paycheck to paycheck and I'm not a very good saver. And so for Christmas, I had gone on to Cafe Astrology, which for those of you guys listening is, is in a, a, just a very basic astrology site. You can get your basics and get automated descriptions. It's really cool. It's where I started. And I, I printed them all out this report um, and gave it to them as a Christmas gift. And I <laughs> remember the looks on their faces. <laughs> they were just like, what is this? You know, and they're like, oh, OK, this is interesting. But, you know, they just didn't really they weren't really into it. So um, it was it was kind of just it, it wasn't from them. It wasn't from conditioning. It was from my life path. And the way I got into it was I was working as a valet and a bellman at the Ritz Carlton. Um, they took good care of me, but it just was soul depriving and soul draining. And uh, just drained the life out of me because it was like good money as a valet there. Lots of wealthy people giving you tips if you're nice to them. But there was no end goal. There was no purpose in it. There was no meaning to it. There was no fulfillment to it. And so, uh, you know, this is a man lost after college. I was like, what can show me what I'm here to do? And I turned to astrology and changed my life. Wow, that's awesome. <clears throat> well, first off, what is your sign? I'm an Aries. 
I'm an Aries. Ah. And so you know a little bit about astrology, right? How yeah. much do you know? Okay. What would you guess? I'm going to let you guess the next two. My, my rising, my moon sign, just given you've known me for five minutes or less, but what would you think? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to give you what I think, like who you are without really knowing you. Mm-hmm. So I would say you're um, the outgoing type. Uh-huh. So the type of person who kind of lights up a room when he comes in the room and likes attention, <clears throat> you care about the way you look. And also on the flip side, you can be stubborn. <laughs> How'd you know that one? <laughs> and um, you, you enjoy a good party. You, you like the, um, that, that outgoing side of you. So you like to be part of, you know, just crowds of people. And of course, pre COVID, but uh, just being able to just feel comfortable, just be yourself and you're approachable, uh, you're likable. And that would be my, my reading of you. That was very, very, very good. Thank you for that. And the two signs just um, to describe what you said energetically, I would say Libra is one of them. Not mm-hmm. saying that I'm, 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 gonna, I'm not saying I am what I'm going to describe, but what you described was Libra, the sign of being, you know, life at the party, outgoing, very friendly, very much in the spotlight, cares about how I look. And Leo, right? Leo being, hey, you know, look at me. I'm presenting this, this thing for all of you guys to enjoy. So you guessed my rising sign, which would be Libra. My rising sign is Libra, which is the, how the world perceives me, right? So you're perceiving me. My energy towards you is very Libran. Um, and then Leo, which is not my rising or moon sign, but it's where my 10th house and my Chiron is, which I'm in the process of healing right now. So all of the stuff, the, the reason you found me and I was on, I'm on YouTube and I'm speaking and all these things, that's my Chiron 10th house Leo which has been going through a healing process, which brings out more of my ability to express myself and be seen by the world. <laughs> so. I like that. That's more in depth than I knew, but, but it's good because I'm learning. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought today Mercury must be in retrograde because I was having <laughs> technology problems. And whenever technology goes to shit, I always blame it on Mercury in retrograde. 100%. Mercury is a trickster sometimes. And I was having tech problems today too. My, my uh, outlet in my bathroom randomly went out and then my computer shut down just before the podcast. That's why I was two minutes late. I was like, I had it on, I had ready. It shut down. I'm like, okay. So anyways, who knows? Yeah, Today was one of those days for me too. And uh, it's just, it was all surrounding technology. And then even with my team, they were having technology problems too. And I'm like, it has to be something in the universe with the planets because whenever that happens, just like with the full moon, and we can get into that too, but I'll, I'll just go off on a tangent talking about that stuff. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, astrology and tarot card readings are becoming more mainstream. So why do you think people are becoming more interested in these practices lately? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's a really deep question, too. The, the first thing that comes to mind is it's becoming more widely available and more mm-hmm. widely seen, and, and it's becoming more approachable. So there are more normal human beings with backgrounds like mine or yours, right? I'm sure that you, I don't know you very well, but I'm sure you come from a very traditional corporate maybe background of like, you know, going through jobs and things like that, finding your way. And we've all had this whole generation. That's been the story. We've been raised by people, baby boomers, loved them to death, who have taught us how to live life on their terms or in their way that's just no longer working. And that whole structure is breaking down. And so people like you and me are finding new outlets and new ways to discover ourselves and to break free from that old, those old paradigms. And part of those ways are ways like TikTok, uh, YouTube, Snapchat, right? These, these. Yeah these um, free market social media platforms where anyone can get online and then anyone with, you know, real passion, talent, and interest can really be seen. Um, and, and so I just think it's spreading. I think it's spreading. And, you know, one, one of my core philosophies is anything that's really has truth in it, mm-hmm. anything that's not just purely a facade, 
but anything that has a real deep foundational ancient truth to it, it will always stick and it will always find a place to grow when the time is right. And I just think that now, I mean, these practices have been, I'm sure you know, these practices have been around for thousands of years. Astrology was formulated thousands of years ago. It was used by doctors, for God's sake. It was used by, you weren't a valid doctor unless you knew astrology, like back in the day, the Babylonians. So to say that astrology is woo-woo or crazy, it's just, it's just the context of it, right? But now I think it's coming around again so that it has a really solid platform to be able to grow. Yeah, and I think that's such a misconception that people have today about astrology, that it's hokey or it's just <clears throat> ridiculousness. And when you take the time to sit there and read some books and read about your sign first, right, because everybody wants to know about their own sign, and then read about all the other signs and then start to think about who you know what their signs are and see how it all kind of comes together. And it might not all be true. It doesn't always fit the mold. But I do think that there's a large percentage of truth that is connected to that. And, you know, it's, you know, uh, someone said to me once, it's, it's not a one size fits all. So I'm a cancer and I can read a horoscope written for all cancers. And I could say some very specific things. And I've had people say to me, well, does that mean that's going to, that same thing's going to happen to all those other cancers at the same time? So I think there's value you can extrapolate from the, the different readings so yep. that you can identify what fits to you specifically. Yes. And I noticed that even on some of the, the readings, uh, I've come across it will say, if you're still in school, this applies to you. If you're married, this applies to you. If you're not, this applies to you. So I think it's about people taking the time to understand that and apply it to their everyday lives. I couldn't agree more. And I'm so glad you said that because that is the most common um, way that people find or create doubt in these practices is saying, there's no way, there's no way this could all apply to, and it, it doesn't, it's not supposed to, right? It's not, there's so many deep nuances within the science that are then art that matter in the way someone perceives some matter in the, but really, I mean, the purpose of it for those of you guys listening, any of this stuff, tarot, astrology, these deep sciences. Um, the, the thing is whether or not it's, it's accurate, so to speak, not, not saying it's not accurate, by the way, I, I hundred percent. I mean, my life and my business is, you know, it's built on the accuracy of tarot and astrology and helping people tangibly. So that's that. But let's just say, even if it wasn't accurate, but you had a tarot reading, you had an astrology reading, and something that was said hits you very deeply. Mm -hmm. And what does that cause? Well, it causes this deep face-to-face -face introspection or coming to terms with something, some truth that needed to be reflected to you mm -hmm. so that you could grow and realize something or you could say, no, that's not me, I'm this. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it will have that effect. Oftentimes when, when you see a reading, because there's so many readings out there, when you see a reading that's not meant for you, it's still meant for you, but it's meant to trigger you so that you can land where you're supposed to be. That's right. the other side of it. So that's anyways, I'm glad you brought that up because that's an important point, I think, for people to know. Yeah, it, it always was frustrating for me to try to convince people that it's not BS. And I would say, well, you know, let me let me tell you some information about your characteristics and personality. And sometimes I could even guess their actual birth date and that would really freak them out. Oh, wow. They're like, how did you know that? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just a number that popped in my head. So I said the date and it turns out it was their birthday. And that's happened about a handful of times in my life. Wow. It's like, well, what's funny is you, <laughs> I, this was totally random. I don't know if, you know, this was, it obviously wasn't planned, but you, this podcast is on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> this is my birthday. So. Oh, right. That's right. I knew that. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank, thank you. But I just thought it was funny that you, you know, whether randomly or subconsciously, you chose it on my birthday. So there must be something with you and, and <laughs> guessing people's birthdays. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's funny. It's it's just about how the, the universe works. And uh, it looks like we, we found you at the right time. And, and yeah. here you are. I hope you're having a nice birthday, by the way. It's fantastic. And I told this to Emily or your assistant yep. and I was like, there's no, there's no other thing right now in my life that I'd rather be doing than recording a podcast. <laughs> so it was awesome. And thank you. 
That's awesome. Yeah. So, so things like astrology and tarot cards, um, you know, it, it's something that I think people are curious about, but either they might be afraid to ask or they're not really sure like what the difference is between the two. Can you kind of explain the difference between the two? Yeah, absolutely. So astrology and tarot are two branches really of the same application or the same science. Astrology is the logical, the, it's almost like the logical confirmation, the left-sided interpretation of the energies, the collective energies that are happening at any one time. So let's say if, and that's, that's actually why and how it resonated with me because I was, I am and was very left brain when I got into astrology and it was the gateway to opening more of my intuition because when I first started, I could see this roadmap and I practiced something, I've studied something called evolutionary astrology which says that the astrology map is more than just a bunch of um, personality traits to put together. It's the roadmap of a soul. So it's the soul's actual intention that it came into in this lifetime to experience and to go towards. So you can see someone's potential highest destiny. And that's what I love about it is because we can go straight to the core reason of why someone's here and what they're here to experience. And it normalizes the events and the troubled times they've gone through. Anyways, what I've realized is as I got deeper into astrology and I was reading and studying the symbols and got a very good intellectual foundation, the symbology opened up a side of me that I didn't know I had to be able to intuitively channel and know what the planets meant or what the energy was saying in a certain time for the collective or in a certain person's chart. And so eventually it grew into this half knowing what the planets and houses and all that mean half channeled uh, readings. And so now it's half and half. The tarot came in right when I like uh, basically balanced that out and said, here's the next step to your intuitive progression and trust. Now that you know how to channel, now we're just going to give you in the moment, right? Visual imagery for your brain to be able to open up and to speak whatever comes through. And so this was the next step for me. This was the next step of trusting my intuition and trusting that energetically, as long as I intended uh, it, that the symbols and the symbology in my subconscious mind would be able to channel accurate information about a person or a situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So can you give us a crash course on the difference between uh, your sun sign, moon sign, and your rising sign? Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you asked. So sun <laughs> sign for everyone talking, and this is a really common question. So, and there's, there's different definitions, but here's mine. Um, sun sign is the energy that you are given that other people can feel that you can light a room up with that you can impact others on an energetic level from. So, and I take that you can take this all and bring it back to nature. So if you look at what the sun does, right? We can see it, but mostly we can feel it. It's mostly a feeling thing. We know the sun is there. I can see from my apartment. I can uh, feel that it's there and see that it's there from the light that it shines. And I can feel it from all the energy it's emanating from all the world around me. So that's the same thing as what's inside of you. It's what is the energy you're constantly putting out into the world on a deep level that other people can feel and are impacted by. And when you really step into the power of your sun sign, you can change people's energetic physiology to be higher, right? To raise its, its vibration, to raise its consciousness um, and to shed a light on the darkness as well. So people with really powerful sun signs, anyone who's shrouded in darkness, right? Or not willing to see the truth, it's going to be very triggering for them too. So that's the sun sign. Rising sign um, is the way in which the world receives uh, me or you or anyone, right? Or the way in which the world perceives my energy, the way in which my energy hits them. Um, it's the, it's the, people say it's the mask. I don't like that term as much. I feel like it's more of the, it's like a blanket, right? That covers the energy of the sun that then is able to be translated to someone's particular um, lens of interpretation. I don't know if that made any sense, but for instance, in this, uh, you know, I just said my, my, my rising sign is Libra. Mm -hmm. And so you would perceive me, right? I'm coming off to you as someone who's quite extroverted, right? Very friendly, cares about how they look, things like that. Privately, though, I'm a whole different person, 
privately in turn, once you, if you were to get to know me for a year or two, you'd know I'm an extremely introspective person, a very thoughtful and a very, um, uh, you know, mystical kind of person, right? Very spiritual in that way. Now I am, at least I've developed into that. So that's the rising sign power though, is, you know, that's just how people see me. It's my gift of how I present myself to the world. The moon sign is your subconscious mind. So it's how your mind interprets the world and it's how you see the world. So my moon sign is in Capricorn. And so Capricorns, you probably know, Capricorns are very stubborn, (laughs) along with Aries. Capricorn, very stubborn, very hardworking, very progressive, and very practical sign. So with a moon sign, which is really the emotional part of my body, right? The intuitive, emotional, subconscious part of my body, the way I perceive and look at the world personally, I see the world in a way where we all have to accomplish our goals. We all have to reach the top of the mountain, right? Capricorn's that goat. So we all have to reach the top of the mountain. We have to do this. And I can't understand anyone who, does, who has the opposite frequency of that, right? Because that's my moon sign. That's how I see the world. Um, so anyways, that's, uh, I would say generally brief rundown. No, that's awesome. Yeah. I think that's really helpful too. And I like how you said that this is my interpretation of it. This is, yeah, oh, I like that. So what role does astrology play when you're helping someone discover their soul purpose? Oh my gosh. It's everything. It's everything. I have um, a reading on my website called your soul's journey and it's a recorded astrology reading. It's a 30 minute chart reading. And basically I look at three to four things mainly in that time. I look at something called the South node, the North node and Pluto. And then I'll look at, I'll look at whatever else stands out. Typically Chiron will play a a piece in that um, your rising sign and any planets, uh, your ruling chart, uh, chart ruler. Um, But those are the main pieces and really South node, North node is the path or the destined yeah, the destined path in which your soul is participating in, in this lifetime. South Node also shows where you're coming from, from past lives. If, if you believe in past lives, not everyone does, that's okay. South Node can indicate your conditioning, how you were brought up, right? What things you tend to believe or have a strong foundation in or are very strong in already. And if you do believe in past lives, it's where you're coming from, from past lives. It's what you've already mastered coming into this lifetime. Um, and the North node is the opposite. It's what we haven't gotten into in our soul's experience of lifetimes or life yet. It's, it's also the most scary. It's one of the scariest, uh, less experienced kind of foreign places for us to go. And it's, it's the path that's not been taken already. So oftentimes in astrology, the reason I love this so much is because I'll get a lot of clients who are still doing their South node work. It's the stuff that they're already comfortable with, right? Let's say someone has a South node in the 10th house and their North nodes in the fourth house. So 10th house being, being known for work and career and publicity and making an impact and reaching the top of the mountain, right? And North node, fourth house is in home, family, love, maybe relationships, that type of thing, deep roots. So I'll talk to this client, just a random example, and he'll be like, he or she will be like, I don't know why I, I feel dead inside. Like, I don't know. I feel like I'm not doing the right thing, even though I'm very successful. I'm making a lot of money. Like I'm this leader. I'm like, yeah, because that's, you've already mastered that. It's easy to you. You have to be doing the stuff that's hard and scary. And I go, how's your relationships? How's your family? And he or she will probably typically go, oh, <laughs> like, it's, like it's kind of this area they've kind of neglected. That's been trying to pull them towards it, by the way. So oftentimes you'll have things. So anyways, we'll go there. And the last thing is Pluto, which Pluto, uh, most people, this is kind of an evolutionary astrology thing, but I've found it's extremely powerful for what makes life feel juicy and meaningful and passionate. Uh, I call it Pluto work. It's the deepest soul's Mm -hmm. inner passion uh, deep down in the body that if you're not doing this work, life kind of feels bleh kind of feels like, oh my God, like it's just a drag, right? Because there's nothing that lights your soul up on fire, right? So for instance, I have my Pluto in my second house, which is the house of developing self-confidence, self-worth, um, strength in my own self-perception and also material wealth. And so if I'm not doing things on a daily basis to increase my sense of who I am and my sense of self-worth and confidence, 
and also builds uh, a foundation and wealth in my life, it doesn't feel good, right? If I spend all my time, you know, doing things like playing video games or just other addictive things that aren't right. meaningful for me, I feel really crappy inside. So anyways, that's a, typically what we go through. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking, you know, you, you mentioned Pluto. Didn't uh, Pluto recently get booted out of the uh, solar system? <laughs> Did you read that? <laughs> they've been trying to, they've been trying to F with Pluto yeah. for the longest time now. And, you know, what's funny is that many astrologers look at that and myself too, as a subconscious, like F you to our soul's greatest passion and desire. Like we don't, we're not going to do that. We're going to ignore that. We're going to push that out of the way because we think we know what's more important. And it's like, actually, no, it's going <laughs> to, it's going to kill you inside. So yeah, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Poor Pluto. I feel bad. Just cause <laughs> All the way out there at the end, and they're just like, "Yeah, we don't need Pluto." Right. <laughs> Not cool. Hopefully, it so, makes it come back. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I I don't want anyone to uh, feel left out. You know. Yes, totally. So, how did you first start practicing with tarot cards? You know, was this one of those things where you went to someone and got a reading, or were you like, "Hey, I'm just gonna try this out because it seems pretty cool"? Yeah. Well, thank you. I think it's pretty cool too. And, um, I actually, um, I was very, uh, when tarot came into my life, <laughs> I'll just share a little bit. So I was at this, uh, very woo woo, I would say co-living facility in Venice, California. I had just quit my job, my corporate job where I was making good money, really good money. I was, a uh, um, you know, top sales associate uh, selling health uh, wellness programs and very unfulfilled, blah, blah, blah. Decided to quit, take a leap of faith, went to live at this co-living facility for a thousand bucks a month, which is actually cheap if you're in LA. And um, there was a bunch of spiritual people around. And so I was doing, I was trying to build my online coaching business and all these things and just start the process that I'm doing now was not going anywhere. I was like just hitting dead ends after dead end. And really I look back and that time was really for me to just experience and heal and be and not worry about things and just right. kind of trust. Um, and it all worked out obviously. Um, and during that time, I remember I was showing this friend astrology and he brings out this tarot deck. It's like, you should really look into tarot. And I go, Oh no, that's like witchcraft stuff. You know, that's just kind of like, I don't, I don't want to go in that. I'm an, I'm an astrologer, right? I, I deal with science and uh, that's my ego was telling me, right. And he's like, no, you don't get it. Like it's, it's very, very truthful and honest and tarot can be a very powerful asset if you're open to it. And I go, okay, well, and he, he drew me some cards for me and it was pretty profound, but I, you know, kind of just put it off to the side. And then, um, I would say, I don't know how long it was, six, six months later, I was in this, uh, I was on this trip to mammoth with some of my good friends and, uh, we were in this cabin together and one of the friends brings a tarot deck and it was the wild unknown tarot deck. I have it here. It's one of the ones I have and use. And she just, she's a psychic medium. And so she kind of knew and she's like, here, and I'm like, what do you mean? Like, she's just here, draw some cards and just draw some cards and try. I'm like, okay, fine. And so I started drawing cards, started drawing cards. And I knew nothing about the meanings of the cards, like astrology. I had practiced and studied for years, knew nothing about tarot. But simply based off of those images, mm -hmm. I could craft and put together a story of what was going on generally in the work life of my friend. And, and it was accurate. And the energies were there. And she goes, that's, that's right. And I go, oh, my God, that's crazy. And, but it hit me that it didn't – tarot wasn't about – it wasn't about witchcraft. It wasn't about anything crazy. It was just about your subconscious mind, as I said earlier – opening up to be able to speak the energies that are currently in that moment affecting the lives of everyone and the lives of one person, um, even without knowing the meanings. And so that's when I was like, immediately I went home, I bought my first tarot deck and I started drawing cards for myself. Didn't, did not even look up the definitions, just drew cards, slowly would start looking up the meanings of the cards after I drew them and just learn through self-practice. And now I can say, it's crazy because I have this uh, YouTube channel and that's what I'm known for. I love tarot readings and collective love and all that stuff. But I've never taken an official 
tarot certification course or really spent too much time studying. It just all came naturally and progressively. It's almost like my, I was remembering as I went. So um, that's how it happened for me um, in my experience. Well, maybe you can start your own Brandon Tobias certification tarot thing. <laughs> Get that going. I would love that. Thank that's you. Cool. And I, and that's funny. That's the second or third time that that's been mentioned to me. So I really do think that that's, that's something I need to do. So yeah, thank you for mentioning fine. that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is there a favorite card that resonates with you? The magician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the magician. Yeah, the magician and the lovers, I would say. But the magician is number one. And the fool is like a number three. Um, all, both of those are Aries energy too, Aries, Gemini. But um, yeah, the, do you know tarot at all? Or are you, are you pretty new to it? I'm pretty new to it. Um, I've gone for many readings in my life, but oh, nice. I've actually done it myself to anyone. But I was more of the, uh, let me read about astrology and let me understand it for myself. And then that helped me figure out how to communicate with certain types of people because yes. once I figured out their sign, it was like so easy. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the salesy marketing side of me is, is figuring out how to connect with people and find uh, the commonalities and just like relational things. And I felt like when I had astrology in my back pocket, it just always seemed to work. Yeah. And people love hearing about themselves and their own signs. Yes. So. 100%. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know specifics on it, but I, I, I would love for, for you to do that for me to, to do a reading and, and you yeah. can kind of educate me as we go. But uh, I think, yeah. you know, it's, it's really awesome, but I haven't had the time to, to put in and, and get to, uh, to learn it like you have. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And I would, I would honestly say, you know, what's coming to me just talking to you intuitively is like, you're, you've already got, it, whatever that is, you've already got it. Uh, I don't know what, I haven't seen your chart, obviously, but as a sun sign cancer, you know, cancers are naturally already tapped in or intuitive. They can have this sense, this gut sense of what's happening and how things are and they can feel it. And then, but for you, it's like, you got to connect the feeling to speaking. And when you connect the feeling to speaking, you, you can tap into people pretty quickly. Um, and I think for you, it just needs to be grounded. Also, it's very important in some left brain thing you can hold and it's very it's funny i was this i am the same way i am and was even more so the same way where i needed something to ground it but mm -hmm. once you once you kind of uh you know dive into that more and just keep practicing and you slowly wean away from the thing you you get into this area where you're no longer grounding it with anything mm -hmm. which is kind of a crazy space to be and I still like to ground a lot, but now it's gotten to the point where it's just, it's one of those things where I can just kind of do it without having to, you know, either know the sign or whatever things just will come. So, but I think to, to sum that up, I think what I feel is like you, you can probably do that too. I would imagine that just things often come like information often come to you or you feel stuff yeah. around the people. Yeah, I do. Um, I feel like I'm an empath, but I also feel and, and my daughter is very much like that too, but I just, I pick up on things and I get, it's like psychic feelings. Like I know something's going to happen sometimes before it happens. I sometimes see it and it's really strange. And sometimes it could be something good and sometimes it could be something bad. And I always hate when I see the bad things because I'm like, no, 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 I don't want that to happen. And then it happens. And it's like, how did I know that was going to happen? Yes. So there's something I'm in touch with or in tune with some sort of psychic energy and you know it's one of those things where i don't know why but i kind of have that or it's just i do something at the exact same moment that someone else is going to do something and you connect at the same time and it's like i just had a feeling i had a feeling just it's always a lot of things i do is based on feeling so i feel like it's a little bit of the empath and the psychic and comes together and uh, that's the best way I could describe it. That's amazing. And thank you for sharing. And, you know, um, can I share some things with you that I'm just kind of picking up on? Yeah. So some, sometimes, and I, so I have this too on my website, it's called a clarity conversation where I'll talk with people 
And if they're open and I'm open and we're both kind of there, the guides will come in and they'll share and I'll hear it on my right side. I'll hear, you know, word, things like that. So the first thing your guides told me was that they really want you. And you've probably been getting this push to open yourself up even more to that world specifically and to start to trust and to believe and to open and to move a little further into that. The second thing they shared is they want you to stop taking on so much <laughs> of the world around you. They want you to learn to put those boundaries up because <laughs> you probably take on way too much and you're just, you know, you're that type of energy. So those two things I think will help. And again, I don't know if any of that resonated. It doesn't matter. That's what I was feeling or they told me. Um, but see, that's just an example of where it's gone to, right? It's like, I started with that astrology, then tarot. And then now it's just like, okay, well, I guess my, I'm less of an empath. I can't, that, that's part of it. But for me, I'm more clear audience. So I'll hear, I'll hear and know. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And you're pretty spot on with all of that, by the way. Oh, thank you. I take, <laughs> I, I take on too much, but it's just my personality, I guess. I'm always just do, 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 go, 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 nonstop. Just, uh, you know, no times for break. Just go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I feel like you pretty much nailed that right on, right on the head. Cool. So you also offer channeled intuitive guidance. Can yep. you describe what is entailed in that? Yes. Well, it's exactly like it, that was a little sample of it, I suppose, right? Okay. Like, where we engage in conversation and um, it's typically I'll open, I'll, I'll, you know, it doesn't even have to do, but I'll open the ceremony, quote unquote, and just create a space uh, mm -hmm. through my intention and voice for our guides to come in and to share whatever information they want us to tangibly know. And my gift that I've realized over time is to be able to translate the frequencies that they are giving to us into words. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you, you are already, that's the, anything that I say that is, you don't feel is right, or you don't feel in resonance with, I always tell this to clients and people like, don't, that's not, it's not right then, right? Everything I should, I say, should be something you're already knowing or feeling. It's right. just, I act as a confirmation. Yes. So for instance, you already knew, right, that you take on too much, and that you should probably start to close off and let go of some things so you can rest and restore. But yet here I come in and I can actually just speak that and translate that out and confirm that. And through that, knowing this, it gives clients a little bit more peace of mind and validation and trust. Because what the other thing it does too is like, imagine everyone's going about their lives and you know, 2021, we're just living these modern hectic lives going from things and it's all these structures we got to participate in. And you know, it's like, who has time to actually trust and listen and understand what their guides are trying to tell them? <laughs> you know, it's just too, there's too many things. Yeah. And so that when they come to me they they get a chance to validate their own feelings through my confirmation. Um, and then they can start to learn to trust that more. So that that's what it is. Yeah. And I love that you said that because I think that in life, when people are going through adversity or states of confusion or any type of uncertainty, I think that people are looking for answers mm. and they turn to Google and they start Googling things because they're trying to get answers and they either stumble upon some blogs and they'll start reading those. They'll try to find maybe some self-help books. Yeah. And the one thing I always kind of turn to was astrology my go-to is actually indastro.com. Oh, nice. Because yeah. I felt Indastro always had everything spot on. Yeah. Years and years and years, I've been reading the same stuff over and over again, and it always seems to apply. Mm -hmm. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm like, wow, how did you know that? <laughs> You're so good, whoever you are, Indastro, writing my horoscope. <laughs> but it was really cool because then I started reading everybody else's horoscopes. And I'm like, yes, okay, yeah, I see that. I start connecting the dots. And then you feel like you know so much, right? Yes. But I feel like I was one of those people just looking for answers. And I think there's so many people out there in the world that just want answers. And it could be a relationship, uh, success. Will I be successful in, in work, in my job? Will I be happy? Uh, how many kids will I have? Will I have kids? You know, just all these different questions. I think people just want answers to. 
questions yeah. about their family, questions about just things in life. And, and I think there's that, that seeking out and, and looking for those answers that bring folks to astrology. <clears throat> and when they actually give it a chance and start trying to understand it, I feel like then the light bulb goes off mm. and they start to make those connections. And then you, you feel that there's some sort of satisfaction because you feel like you're finally getting some answers. That's, that's the great thing about it for me personally. Yes. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And um, just like you said, that's, it's a beautiful gateway for people who are very logically prone. And most of society, we've been conditioned to be very logically prone and to see and rule and make decisions from our head as opposed to our hearts. And that's what we're all transitioning into more of is making decisions from our intuition, our hearts, right? Our soul. Um, but astrology is, a, is an amazing gateway for that just because of what you said, which is it provides answers, tangible answers and confirmations. And, you know, almost like the secret knowledge that once you know, it's like, oh, like there's a way in which the world is designed that I can study that will then give me this overview of, of how everything's working and how it's going. Very special. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so when did you first discover you had this gift for channeling messages? Oh, gosh. Uh, I would say it's so funny you asked that because it took me years. It took me so many years not to develop it so much. I would, well, developing too, but to trust it, to trust it. Like to come on here on this podcast and to just like without reading a tarot card, without reading astrology, just to say whatever intuitively came to me in the moment, that took a long time. Um, the first time I ever heard my guides was during a Reiki initiation ceremony. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, 18, I forget exactly. Uh, I was uh, in doctrine or I was certified in Reiki and they do the ceremony where they, you know, quote unquote, activate the energy. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious, a very skeptical again. It was during that exploratory time of mine. And um, during that ceremony at the end, um, I heard these kind of, strong but very persistent thoughts or voices that said stop drinking alcohol for the time being mm -hmm. and stop eating meat for this period of time hmm. um for this period of time I'm, I'm i'm i am a meat eater generally but for that period of time they said stop eating meat and i go ah, i'm not gonna you know what is that and i just it stuck with me though and it kept saying like that wasn't my that wasn't me like because I wouldn't think that I wouldn't think to stop eating meat. I loved meat. I was, I was, I worked for Bulletproof labs. It's a biohacking. I don't know if you know Bulletproof, but it's all about keto and, and grass fed meat and all that stuff. So anyways, it wasn't for me. And I was like, what? And I realized down the line that those were my guides that finally had access to be able to share with me information that, that they thought would be helpful. Hmm. So anyways, Years go by. I start practicing and studying astrology more. I told, I told you, know, I get into tarot eventually. And what really broke it open was tarot, actually. Tarot was the thing that allowed me to start to tr trust more in my spontaneous creation of knowledge and articulation of the energy and information that was coming. And then after that, it was validation. So the real thing that got it was when I started my YouTube channel and, you know, part of that, I was doing sessions for people randomly, things like that. But when I started doing it on YouTube and I get people watching and not just watching, but saying that these readings are changing their life, that they're, they resonated with every drop of it, that random people that, I, you know, I would like on the deepest level, right. We're saying this, that I had no idea that I was channeling for. You know, it was just my intention, mm -hmm. but through trust, that is what got it. And then obviously doing more personal sessions, I was like, okay, fine. I accept that this is a real thing. And I still, I still, you know, have times when I'm skeptical about it and things like that, but it's really about trusting in the unknown and the unknown potential of what you have inside of you and what you you have to share too, um, because it's a beautiful gift, but it's also very scary thing to do to trust in the you know more spiritual realms of what you have the potential to be and do you know what i mean yeah absolutely 
Yeah. So what are some things that a, a potential client can expect from what it, from one of your guidance sessions? <laughs> I laugh because <laughs> I laugh because the first thing is like you can't I've done I don't know how many I've done now since I opened them probably over, you know in the 40s 50s it's been it's been this session has been available from a few months now but um it they've all been dramatically different um like <laughs> they follow the same basic structure but we really just go where they need to go at that particular time on their journey. And my process is this. I'll always say the basic structure is this. I'm going to open this ceremony in space. I'm going to call in our guides and I'm going to allow you, I'm going to allow you to converse with them and to ask me questions, you know, ask them questions through me. And I'm going to channel what they have to say. And I'll say when human Brandon is giving his experience advice when, and when it's the guide speaking through. And so oftentimes they'll find through that conversation, clarity conversation, the confirmation, the validation, the reassurance that they need, because it's things that they haven't told me as a human, yet they're experiencing and feeling, and they're really hoping for, or, or they're thinking or whatever, and it'll confirm it. That's the one, that's probably the most common. The other two things are, we'll do healing. Um, we'll do like some in-depth, and I'm not a healer right? I help people heal themselves. I help people know how to heal themselves. And the other thing we'll do is we'll go into the body, right? So I'll, I'll share with people, okay, you can close your eyes, take your awareness down into your body. And I want you to listen to the emotions and the feelings that your body has to share with you. And then through my guidance, we'll go deep in and we'll discover traumas. We'll discover, you know, things that from way in the past that are still affecting them to this day, and I'll help them to release that through their own, um, you know, through their own experience of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Wow. That's pretty deep. It's pretty deep. It's very deep. You go yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's very deep. And my, that is, that is what uh, my North node, by the way, is in the fourth house, which would mean that my, and all these planets, I have a lot of houses in the fourth house, which is the roots, the deep roots and foundation, the deepness, the depths. So that's where I go with people as I go down into the soul and we bring out what needs to be brought out. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> that could be scary. <laughs> it is terrifying sometimes, even for me, but that's what we do. So what are some of the things you do to care for your own energy in between all the readings and channeling messages? Yeah. Yeah. What an amazing question. Um, you know, that's the part that I'm as a human working on actively, honestly, and it's hard for me because, you know, I have had to learn and I'm still learning how to structure my life in a way that is going to allow me to continue to be, you know, doing all this magic, you know, in the world, but mm -hmm. you can't continue to do those things if you don't have a solid foundation or platform to do them from. So I've had to learn how to build my own structure to life and foundation to life. You know, everything from a routine mm -hmm. to a consistent workout regime to consistent, you know, foods and timings of those foods and supplements and just be consistent with them. And I'm honestly still working through a lot of that. Like I'm still telling myself, Hey, you got to make your bed again. You got to make sure this is clean, do your laundry, do your dishes, all these things. So, but what I found is the more clean and the more organized and the more kind of orderly things are around me, the easier it is for me to just flow in and through life and do and be the things that I can naturally be. 100%. And so yeah, and so that's been the, the the big thing for me. And you can see this see this red star, yeah. red metal star. Yeah. So I just had a feng shui uh, practitioner. He just randomly messaged me and said, "We need to do this feng shui for your house because you have these cursed corners or whatever he was saying." I I have no idea about feng shui. <laughs> and uh, God bless him. He was a life changer because he came in. He he gave, he gave me like a free session. I ended up paying him afterwards because he was so amazing. But. And he put these, you know, metal stars there and just did all these things. And I, I swear to God, after that happened, this was probably a week ago, 
I started getting more fame, more money, more recognition, and more progress than I ever have like in this past six months. In fact, you guys found me probably a day or two after I did the feng shui changes, which is insane. Yeah. So it's crazy. I, I got to call your feng shui guy. Uh, I, I have his info if you want him. Yeah, I'll <laughs> definitely recommend him. That's awesome. <clears throat> wow. So first off, that's, that's pretty awesome. And mm -hmm. I think it's great what you're doing. It's, you must be so excited. Just that, that feeling of, wow, all these things are happening for me and it's, it's all positive. And if you look back in time, you probably never thought you'd be doing this today and where you'd be now. Right. Oh my gosh. I, I had no idea, no clue. And, you know, what's so interesting, thank you for sharing that, by the way, because I do really feel like that. I feel like so blessed and so lucky and so grateful. And I wake up sometimes, I'm like, how is this even happening right now? And, you know, I would say it's just my struggle in life, my main challenge that I'm still mastering is to trust in the unknown and to trust in the changes and the spontane spontaneity mm -hmm. and the unknown of how things will turn out in life. And because things, you know, I'm very much so, maybe you can relate, but very, very much so, I like to know how things are going to play out. Yeah. What's going to happen? I like to know the future. That's why I got into astrology. I'm like, I want to know the future. I want to know where I'm going. Where how are you? things going to turn out, right? <laughs> and, you know, and that's everything from in relationships to right. my life, right, to everything. And what's ironic about that is my destined soul path or journey is to not know how things will turn out and how they're going to play out. Mm -hmm. It's to be in the experience of it all mm -hmm. moment by moment, day by day and trusting as things go. And the more that I've quote unquote mastered that or worked at that, I'm still mastering that the better my life has become. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> so you also do virtual events in addition to your one-on-one -on -one readings. <clears throat> Can yeah. you tell us about that? Yes. Yes. So I've partnered up with my good friends. One of them, well, actually both of them were the ones from that mammoth trip where they initiated me into tarot and their names are Mora and Alexis. And we partnered up their, their company is called mend every mind. Mm -hmm. And we do a bi-weekly event where we have a, an in-depth meditation from Mora, the psychic medium. We have a, a mythological story told by my friend Alexis. And mythological stories blow my mind because they're just timeless lessons of like both astrological significance and energy. It's crazy. And then an in-depth astrology breakdown. And so it's this event. Um, but I also... You know, the first thing that came to me when you said that is I, my greatest desire, and if anyone that hears this wants to help me make this a reality, I'm open to it, but I want to build like the Tony Robbins of spirituality, like a, a event, you know, like I want to be, I, I want to have this conference where people can come and learn about things like astrology and tarot and spirituality and love and relationships and you have it be like this personal development slash, but personal development in the spiritual esoteric realm through that, if that makes sense. Cause that's my background. My backgrounds, you know, I've been to Tony Robbins events and I was in network marketing for a while and I learned all about psychology and NLP and that's where I'm coming from. So you and I, I think have similar backgrounds there. And I noticed in the, you know, your whole format, it's beautiful, beautifully done the email and the way I was invited and the things that just, it was very, very well crafted and a very good platform. And so I applaud you for that. Um, but anyways, that's, that's what I ultimately, that's like my dream is to speak at an event and host an event like that and travel the world and have events over the world. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> well, that sounds like some great things for you on the horizon. Let's hope so. <laughs> so, How's about you do my reading? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. I All chose right. this deck in particular. So it's the Thoth Tarot deck. Okay. And it's funny. I chose this, you know, this was, this is my most scientific deck, I would say. So it's, it's, it's based on 
it's very it's very much logical it's more practical it's more like the science side of esotericism i don't even know if that's a word esotericism but we're going to go with it so i can sound professional <laughs> um is there are there any questions you'd like to ask uh as we go into this or would you rather just a general channel to read uh questions you have let's see yes um hmm I don't know. Maybe, maybe more like general. Cool. Yeah, maybe Do general. It. Cool. All right. So general reading, and no questions. Just a general whatever they want to tell you for your highest good. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Or maybe, maybe if there's any future children or anything in the in the uh, plans, I, I wouldn't mind hearing about that. Check it out. Okay. All right. Open the ceremony now between myself and Melissa, calling in our collective guides, angels, loved ones, masters, wise ones, and archangels. Welcoming you into the ceremony. Please, guides and spirit, allow me to channel for the highest good and healing for Melissa at this time. What does she need to know for her highest good and healing at this time? And any messages regarding children? Ooh. First cut up is the Two of Cups. So I don't know if you are currently in a relationship, but this would indicate a beautiful, loving relationship. Either I feel like it's coming in even more strongly or it's formulating itself or it's in the forefront of your mind or maybe your general focus of what's going on in your life. Two yes, of Cups. I, I am married. So that's really cool that that came up. So, yeah. Good. Then we have the Eight of Cups, the Eight of Wands, Princess of Cups, the Nine of Cups. Yeah, and the Six of Pentacles. So the first card out, typically the strongest, the Eight of Cups. So what's interesting here is you have the Two of Cups as the crown. You have the Eight of Cups as your next card. Eight of Cups is walking away from something significant in your life in order to walk towards something better. I know what that is. <clears throat> so there may be something in your life that you're ready to move away from and you need to move away from because Eight of Wands shows up next to it, which is sudden and quick movement in the destined direction of where your soul really wants to go. Okay. So this first message is a confirmation to, hey, whatever it is you know that you need to stop being involved in stop giving energy in stop being around it's time it's time to go okay it's time to walk away from that and then once you do that eight of wands will allow this lightness this lightness to your soul to come in so that you can move in your direction this it's almost like there's this heaviness right there's this weight that once you detach from that weight in your soul you can you can move it's just going to go right really quickly towards your destiny so spirit wants you to know when you make that move even though it may eight of cups by the way sad to say it's one of the hardest cards in the deck especially for cancers why the astrology sign cancer because it's letting go ah. it's letting go and walking away and cancers believe me, i'm a south node cancer so i have a lot of cancer and energy we care so damn much right and we do not want to let go and we want to give 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 we want to support we want to make sure everyone's okay we want to make sure that people reach their highest potential and we want to nurture and princess of cups shows up as well underneath the two of cups which means that in love it might be you giving 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 or wanting to give and maybe it not it being too much or someone not being open to receive your cup or just being right uh, uh, a non-reciprocal foundation at this time now the last two messages that spirit has and by the way, it, I know that tarot, again, it's one of the, tarot is, can be always right to the point, right to the truth, brutally honest. So you don't, don't feel pressured to like confirm if this is right or not. I know this is a public forum. Right. So if you just want to keep it like to yourself, that's totally cool. I'm just going to say what comes to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. What's on the horizon though. So this, these are all the lessons you might be experiencing or needing to go through right now. Okay, that will create this lightness and movement towards your destiny. 
because the overall outcome here is the nine of cups and the six of cups. So what's being formulated in your life is an equal give and take, reciprocal and dream fulfillment in love specifically. That is what's coming. That is what wants to formulate itself if and only if you are willing to walk away first from the thing that is not giving you that. Okay, It's the lesson here, Melissa, that I'm hearing and seeing is to stop giving your cup to someone or to something that is not willing or able to receive it or to give you back what you're worthy of. Six of Pentacles. Equal give and take. I'll draw one more. World cards on the bottom of the deck. Ah, oh, this is okay. This is probably terrifying for you, Nine of Swords, and it probably keeps you up at night, probably stretches you out a lot, and probably has just gives you a lot of anxiety generally about the situation when it comes to love. Um, just know that, okay. The advice of the tarot here is, when you make this move, whatever it is, it's all going to change fast, and it's going to it's meant to turn itself into a situation where there is that reciprocity, where that is that wish fulfillment. Whatever wish you've been having, whatever vision you've been having, wish you've been having of things, how to for formulate that you know, as I'm speaking, I can tell you feel that, that's what's coming. That's what wants to come, okay? That ultimate ideal. And just know that this is confirmation of whatever that is for you, but you have to be willing to walk away first, okay? Um, and get some rest. Nine of Swords can be a very tough card uh, to keep someone up. Um, world card on the bottom of the deck. This is the end. The last move that you need to make is this move to end the cycle. Tremendous cycle in your life, probably regarding love and or life generally. Okay. Wow. So that was your reading. That was pretty awesome. Thank you. I, I hope it helps. Again, no need to confirm or speak about it. If you don't want to, you're welcome to. But um, uh, oftentimes, again, tarot can be pretty straight to the point. So Yeah, um, no, that's great. Thank you so much for that. That's very welcome. cool. I was yeah. connecting the dots in my head. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yes, uh, and it all made sense for me. I'm also a believer. So for me, it's very easy to listen and receive. Yes as opposed to having a wall up that <clears throat> folks that I think might be skeptical would have up and be like, Oh, this isn't going to be anything or it's not going to connect to something. But for me personally, it did. So I think that was great. That's but awesome. And, and thank you. And I, that is, that's great. And I felt that, which is why I, you know, you have to kind of feel where people are at. And so if they're, if they have that wall up or they're not willing to be open to receive, you have to kind of sense that and not be willing to go. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone as deep as we did if I didn't sense there was an openness there for me to kind of give a little more, but also not too much, <laughs> you know, like not to go all the way in, um, you know, so thank you for that opportunity. That was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, where can people find you? currently for all the services that you offer you have your youtube channel website all that good stuff so so tell us yeah yeah um so my main website is brandontobias.com all one word um tobias is spelled t-o-b-i-a-s so brandontobias.com and i would say if you want if you're interested in what i do my channel is all about the essence of true love and what i call the twin soul connection and what I believe is true love is the thing that wants to formulate itself right now on earth. Just like you're reading here. We didn't, we just said generally, hey, Spirit, can we get some general messages? Of course, it's about love, All right? That's the, the sun, I believe, is conjunct Venus yesterday and today. It's love is coming together, but it's true love. It's not some fake BS conditioned, you know, things that aren't for us kind of love. It's true love from the depths of our soul. Mm -hmm. And people are finding their true counterpart in love right now. They're coming together. We're in the process of coming together, divine masculine, divine feminine, coming together into union with our true person. And that's what's happening. And that's what I'm here for. That's I'm here to help lead and guide people who are in that situation. Maybe they're separated from their person they know, or they're looking for that person, or they're, you know, things are messy with that person currently and whatever. And I'm here to kind of guide the energies and advice as to what's going on on both sides. So um, that's that's what I do. So if you if you're in love, or if you're looking for love, or if you are curious about what true love is, 
and maybe the, the, the definitions of the, of what type of connection you're in. Maybe you're in a connection where, you know, you're like, I don't know what the hell this is, but I really care about this person on a deep level. I can't explain why it doesn't make sense logically, but on a soul level, I feel them. That's what I guide for. And that's the collective that I'm here to help mainly. And so anyways, my, my channel is called science of the soul and stars. And so that's what I do. And then it's going to lead into where it's growing into is helping people to discover the soul purpose and doing more astrological things and teaching astrology and having courses. So check that out. And then TikTok as well. If you just want to sample little mini readings from me to see if it resonates and can help uh, my username is BR underscore Tobias on TikTok. So you can check me out on all those places. Okay, Brandon, thanks so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure having you. And I look forward to everything that's coming your way on YouTube and, and TikTok and everything else. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Melissa. This was amazing and so much fun. And I appreciate you having me on here. Thank you. All right, take care. And thank you everyone for listening to another episode of A Breath Fresh Marketing. Be well.